All right, we're here with Christian Rosakis, who has uh, been in a number of feature films and uh, is going to give us his background and give you a little advice on you know, what he feels is going to be helpful to you. Why don't you start a little bit telling us uh, when you first decided you wanted to become an actor? Um, I was pretty young. I got into LaGuardia High School Performing Arts, um, so that was a big, it's like one out of 60 kids that got, got in at that point, so I started to actually really seriously think about it. My mother and father are musicians, so I've always been kind of surrounded by arts and my family. And, um, and I went there and that was, that was an amazing experience. Uh, best school, fantastic, so I started to do really well there. Um, got the leads and the plays, and it was pretty fun. And then um, directly after that, I was contacted by my agent um, from one of the shows that I did there. It was artists, so I kind of just slid right into that and um, studied at William Esper Studios. And that was also a fantastic uh, experience, fantastic two years. Everyone got really, really serious there. Usually you have a class, and half the people are extremely serious, this is what they want to do, and then the other half are kind of like, I'm kind of not sure what I want to do, so let's try acting, mm -hmm. I have all this pent up energy or whatnot, so I think I can be an actor, and um, those two years was just fantastic, because every single person in my class was so serious. Um, so that challenged me as well, since I was one of the youngest first people to, uh, to be with around everybody. So, that was cool, and then um, afterwards, it's just history from there. I just started to audition, audition, audition. Um, I mean, I went through so many roller coaster rides with agents and business. Because um, once again, I, I, I kind of had an open door from the very beginning. So I'm extremely fortunate to have had that. Um, but in that, it kind of clouded my vision on the amount of work that it really takes to get to the point that I already was. Mm -hmm. um, and I've learned this through, I mean, you could say the past, um, like the past 10 years, I've been really um, humbled by everything about this business. It is changing, always, and it's wonderful. Um, if you know how to tag it, like any business. When you say you were humbled by it from when you started, were you cockier when you started, or are you just saying oh, that you sure. were? Oh, sure. I mean, I was, I was <clears throat> at high school of 17, I went got to Wingmaster Studios, mm -hmm. and, you know, I was getting all this stuff, so I wasn't aware that every single audition was, almost could be considered a rarity, but the amount, I wasn't, I wasn't, I was just, doing my thing, you know, I was, I was just uh, accepting these things from my agent and I didn't realize until, I guess, I mean, I, I had a very good clue that it was mm -hmm. a big time, everything was, everything was pretty enormous in its production value, um, but as the years go down, you, you know, come to understand how extremely important every single audition, whether it's a five-liner, whether it's no lines at all. Every single opportunity that you get is could be a changing, life-altering momentum mm -hmm. that can just completely push you in the right directions, whichever directions your career takes. You. Now, what are some of the uh, roles that you've played that have been among your favorites? Um, I just finished a film called A Fits. Uh, by far, the greatest role um, I played. It takes place in a, uh, um, a psychiatric world. Um, it's kind of like a mix between Black Swan and One Floor of the Cuckoo's Nest, uh, where a soldier um, enters into this facility believing he was a, uh, a soldier, war hero in Iraq, became infam infamous by uh, um, torturing Iraqi soldiers. Um, but he had this thing where he was tortured himself. He wasn't the one tortured, he was being tortured. So he goes into this uh, place just thinking that it's rehabilitation. I, my character is the 
be mischievous and I'll lead a uh, psycho, insane person. Um, and I, it, it was just, the whole situation was wonderful. Uh, we, we shot in an actual psych ward that was uh, abandoned. How Very creepy was that? Oh. I was going to say, creepy. So perfect. Yeah. So creepy. So creepy that I didn't want to go too far away from set because I didn't, you know, you can just feel all these, you know, all the patients that have been there throughout the years. So it's just, it was perfect. All the all the cells had little little box doors in the walls, which made it perfect for a film because if you're at the opposite end of the hallway, on the far end of all the rooms, mm -hmm. if you opened all the doors, you can shoot and actually see through all the doors into the cell that you were shooting. So they must have actually had that because of, you know, the cellmate was crazy, he was violent, he could go into another room and then get into the doors to sedate them whatever mm -hmm. they were doing them. So that was a great film. Uh, it was crazy. <laughs> yeah. No now pun you, intended. You've done a lot of, yeah. <laughs> you've done a lot of film work. Do you um, also want to do a lot of stage work or oh, are you more absolutely. comfortable with film? Absolutely. I mean, uh, the future is film. Future is film. In a stage, it's a different kind of acting. Um, it's more satisfying for an actor, I would say to be in a show because you're involved with it, everything is running, this whole life is kind of one solid um, journey that you get to develop and mm -hmm. go through as opposed to when you're doing film, it's a, a lot of waiting, so much takes, it takes so much to set up all these scenes and um, you know, so it, it's a lot of, you know, if, you're, if you have a very emotional scene she was very hard when I was doing the psych person. I mean, for me, it's easy because I'm just crazy. But I mean, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it's it's hard to always have to tap right into that and, right. and just do it. As opposed to when you're doing a show, you get to just ride this as a roller coaster of adrenaline and the rush from the audience. The only thing is, you're performing for if you have a Broadway show that's great, more often than not, you can have an off Broadway show or whatnot. You'll be performing in front of 300 people. You're performing in front of maybe People are really lucky. Um, I performed the Metropolitan Opera at the Lincoln Center, so that was 4,000 people, which is fantastic. But um, when you're doing the film and you're doing TV, you're, being, you're able to touch audiences of much vaster amounts. And, and once it's filmed, they cannot take that away from you. You have that forever. You can be seen forever. You, if it, it's a TV show that plays, and we aren't, I'm just looking at paper off. A Law and Order gig that I did six years ago. Because it's on every channel all, all the time. I reruns. Yeah. I get, you know, checking the mail two times a year because I rerun from criminal attendance. Going on from, uh, you know, they go on. It hey, goes just, on and on and on. So you just you Sorry. No, it's okay. No, no, go ahead. I was just saying, that, so when you are recorded, when you're doing this and being recorded, being mm -hmm. filmed, you are lasting past your years. You're who are there forever. So it's the future. Um, it's also the higher paying bracket of the industry. Mm -hmm. So I mean, there's a lot of facets why I would say film is fantastic. Film is the way to go. And you can get realistic with the film in ways you can't get with theater. And, and, and what I would actually like to see is bridging of the gap between theater and film. So a lot of times I go to a, uh, I love watching films, it's my favorite thing. But I would go do a show, and even in the Broadway productions, it could be fantastic actors. I'll still feel like I can see them working, mm -hmm. as opposed to having that kind of a bridged gap. Um, people probably can't even say this, but the, the bridged gap between uh, film and theater would be a more natural, more realistic, and it'll bring the audience in a little bit more. Oh, many things. You mentioned about be performing with the Metropolitan Opera. Did you make a conscious effort to not go the musical route because your parents were singers? Or when did you realize you could sing? Um, uh, did you get that gift? Well, on a little correction, I don't sing at the opera. Okay. Um, I loved opera. I was not opera in high school. It was something that I liked to do. Mm -hmm. kind of music. When it was pop stuff. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I love pop too. Uh, but in that, I, I, they had a, uh, an audition for a soldier to stand in on Aida. So, what a better way to go to the opera? Yeah. And, you know, 
couldn't afford tickets, hey, you might as well just be on the stage. Right. You know? Why not? So I got into that, wound up, man, and when you see, if you ever take a tour backstage at the Met, it is enormous. It is a holy place. It is, I can sleep there. It is wonderful. It's, um, the stage is the smallest part of the entire arrangement. It's, and all the way, all the detail that they put into all these productions, it's, it could be filled, well, it, it is filled, all the production mm -hmm. not be put on HD. But um, for me, it was uh, just a way to, to really be able to listen to music in a higher form, on the stage, interacting with the actual people, as well as being able to act as well. I kind of grew from there, so to do all these, they had, I had five work on my resume. So they took me on as a stage combatant, mm -hmm. and um, I was able to do more acrobatics slash uh, pantomime. I was in, um, at a thing to fame. Um, I was in Hamlet as a player villain. And in the opera Hamlet, which is completely different from the Shakespeare play, the opera Hamlet, the uh, player villain has a much more intricate part um, and the connection with Hamlet, who's played by uh, Simon Kingley's side. And in that, I mean, I have my vows, I have my name in the credits, and to be able to see me, it's myself, I went to see myself in the theaters, it was just, you know, that's that's where you want to go, a film, to be filmed. And even in, in theater, it's still, it's being filmed. It's, but, you know, that's my, and now, uh, what advice would you give to people who are just starting out, um, whether it be in theater, whether it be pursuing a film career? If you're going to be an actor in any facet, know who you are, and you can do anything. Know who you are first, and that's not to be taken lightly. If you don't know who you are, no one will. No one will be able to. No one will hire you. No one will call you into the room because you can tell. Whether you, if you think you can do it all, that's fine, so can I. But I like to focus on one aspect of myself that I know is remarkable. It's a business. And when you know that about yourself, you know your type, you know what you're good at, what you love to do, it doesn't have you. Hey, you can, you can be, if you're starting out and you haven't figured all this out, going to a school, best thing to do, you get to find that, mm -hmm. find what you do good, really lay into that so that when you are working, you have something that you can bring out and just give it to people. And you'll get accepted that way. It's, it's a really good way to, no one can take that from you. It's more of a personal thing to do for yourself. And if you think you do, but you're not quite sure, look into that and really manifest whatever you can in order to pinpoint exactly who you are and what you want, what roles you want to play. Do the research. There's a lot of work to be done. Even for myself, always. A lot of research to do on, on what TV shows are out, you know, who's, who the big players are, who are the big players that I want to be like, who do they know, who are the casting directors that shoot or that, uh, that, that cast that kind of production, make the list. They have um, another thing. I'm going to have tons of advice. Um, another thing. Uh, Go into a good studio like One on One or Actors Alliance that, that focuses on having you as an actor meet and greet uh, with agents, managers, and casting directors. They are the people that you're going to work with. There's all this talk about how they don't really, they're not really looking for anyone. They just kind of want to sit there and make the money while you do your thing and they give you some advice and they don't really care. But if you're good enough with who you are and what you do, you can change their mind. And that's the only reason I've gotten called in from, from doing that kind of stuff. Getting into the studio, doing what I do well, performing as well as I can, and get the call back. It's a great way to meet the people we want to work with in the future. Thank you so much for taking time to do this.